That was a severe kickback accident. The worst possible thing that can happen to you if you're working with a chainsaw. Since people began using chainsaws in the 1940s and 50s, thousands have been hurt or killed in accidents just like that. Sure, chainsaws are a lot safer nowadays, but kickback is still just as dangerous. People are still getting hurt, and people are still getting killed. What can we do about it? Well, let's start by taking a look at exactly what kickback is and how it works. There's really nothing very mysterious or terribly complicated about it. It's a matter of force and momentum. In a chainsaw, the force from the engine acts just as much on the saw in one direction as it does on the chain in the other. But the chain is lighter and you're holding on to the body of the saw, so the saw stays put and the chain goes around. Now, let me show you with something a little safer. When we turn on the motor, the force acts just as much on the body as it does on the chuck. But the chuck is lighter and I'm holding on to the body, so the chuck goes around and the body stays still. But look what happens if we suddenly stop the moving part. Right, all that force has to go somewhere, so the other part starts to rotate. And you'll notice it's going the other way around. That's a transfer of momentum. Equal force, opposite direction. That's exactly what happens in a chainsaw kickback. Normally the chain is going around, but when something grabs a chain and stops it when it's running under power, that same transfer of momentum takes place. And when the chain is forced to stop, the saw has to move in the opposite direction. Now when that happens, there are only two variables we have to worry about. The amount of force, and the direction of the motion. The amount of force in the kickback may be very little if the chain isn't forced to a sudden or complete stop. The saw may just buck a little bit or bounce in the cut. It happens all the time while you're cutting. If the chain is pinched or slowed down a lot though, the kickback is more severe and the saw might rebound out of the cut. It happens what? Once or twice a day, but it's still fairly easy to deal with if you're holding the saw properly but it's when you're cutting under full power and something happens to slam the chain to a sudden dead stop that all of the energy in the system goes into the kickback. And that's when the consequences can be really bad. That's where the second variable, direction, comes in. If you stop the chain on the top of the bar where it's running forward, the saw goes the opposite way, straight back. If you stop the chain on the bottom of the bar where it's running towards you, the saw is jerked straight forward. And here, at the tip of the bar, the chain is running at an angle forward and down at the same time. If it gets stopped here, the saw will go up and back. So that's really all there is to it. A kickback happens when the chain is forced to stop and all that energy has to go somewhere. And where it goes is right back into the saw and right back at whoever happens to be standing in the wrong place when it gets there. Now the next question is, what is it that can stop the saw so suddenly that it causes a kickback? Well, there's a couple of different situations. There's bar tip dig in, and there's pinching the bar. Generally, the most serious one is the first one. What happens is that the cutters, those little cutting links in the chain, are making a turn around the tip of the bar. That means that they're pointing out from the bar at an angle. If you let that part of the bar touch solid wood, a branch behind the one you're trying to cut, for example, then that cutter can bite into it at an angle and go too deep. Sometimes, in fact, it goes in so deep that it gets stuck. When it's stuck, it stops the chain, all in a split instant. And when that chain slams to a stop, we know what happens. Transfer of momentum, kickback. What makes bar tip dig in so bad is that both of the variables in kickback, force, and direction are at their worst. When the chain digs in at the tip, the force is often high, and that's bad. And the direction, of course, is up and back. And that's very bad, if that's where you happen to be standing. The second way that the chain can be forced to stop is if it gets pinched by the wood that you're cutting. If you try to cut a log from below in one sweep, for example. You see what happens when the log starts to break? The two ends swing downwards, the cut opens wider at the bottom and closes up at the top. It's that closing up at the top that's a problem. 
As it closes, all the weight of the two halves of the log are pushing together, and it can pinch the chain tight, so tight that it stops. And then, right, the saw kicks straight back out of the cut. The same sort of thing happens, happens all the time, really, when you're cutting branches or spring poles. They tend to be under strain from being forced to bend, and when you've cut partway through, they start to break and start to pinch, like that. So kickback happens. And what we want to know is, what can we do about it? Well, there's a lot of things you can do to prevent kickback and to avoid being hurt if it does happen. A lot of different things. And all you have to do is all of them, all the time. Let's start with the easy part, the saw. Make sure you have an up-to-date saw with all the safety features. Look, low profile bar. You remember that danger zone at the bar tip? Well, there's less curve and less danger zone on this bar. This chain makes it harder for the cutter to dig in. And don't forget the brake. If the saw kicks back, the brake should snap on, and it might just stop the chain before it hits you. Then there's how you maintain the saw. If the air filter is clean and the engine is tuned right, the saw will have enough power to keep the chain running to pull those cutters through the wood rather than letting them get stuck. Then there's chain tension. You want to be sure there's no slack because slack can leave the chain room to go straight where you want it to curve around the tip of the bar. If it goes straight too far, it gets jammed in the wood. The same with sharpening. The cutters are made to cut and if you sharpen them just right, they tend to cut their way out of trouble rather than getting jammed. That's also why you have to start every cut under full power and keep it up until you're finished. And then there's the depth gauge. As you gather from the name, it gauges the depth. It regulates how deep into the wood the cutters can bite. If you don't file them down as the cutters wear back, the saw won't cut. If you file them down too much, they'll try to cut too much, to bite off more than they can chew, as it were, and that can cause the chain to get stuck. That's where this comes in, the depth gauge tool. Make sure you get it just right every time. Okay, you've done all that, and now you've got a saw that's as safe as chainsaws get. But you're not out of the woods yet, especially if you go into the woods and start cutting. How you stand, how you hold a saw, and how you cut, those are the things that will get you out of the woods safely. First, there's how you hold the saw in two hands. Keep your thumb under the forward handle. That way, if the saw does kick back, it won't shoot right out of your hand. You'll at least have a fighting chance to stay in control, especially if you do this. You see the left arm? You try to keep it straight all the time with your elbow locked. You see, if you have your thumb under the handle and your arm is straight when the saw kicks back, this is what happens. The saw swings up and away from you. It swings away from you if you're standing in the right position. Like this, just off to the left, left foot forward at an angle to the work. When the saw kicks back, it will swing clear. Oh, and remember those two kickback situations? Letting the bar tip touch solid wood, or cutting logs and branches from below in one sweep? Don't do that. Stay in control of the bar tip. Don't let it touch anything behind what you're cutting. Watch for branches and small trees. As for cutting logs or branches under tension, you know how to do that. Right, in two stages. First cut one side, then finish it from the other. So let's wrap up and go over this one more time. Kickback happens when something forces the chain to stop when it's running under power. The energy is transferred back into the saw, and the saw kicks back in the opposite direction. The worst situation is when the tip of the bar touches solid wood, and one of the cutters digs itself too deep into the wood. That's when the saw kicks up and back, and that's when people get hurt the worst. Other times, kickback can happen if the bar and chain get pinched when cutting a log from below or a branch under tension. The way to make sure you don't get hurt in a kickback is to use a whole range of measures. Get an up-to-date saw with safety features like a low-profile bar, proper chain, and a brake. Make sure the saw is tuned and running right. 
sharpen the cutters and set the depth gauges to exactly the right specifications and tighten the chain so there's no slack. Hold the saw in two hands any time the engine is running. Wrap your thumb under the forward handle and keep your left arm straight with the elbow locked. Stand off at a slight angle to the work, not right behind the saw. Start cutting under full power. Control the bar tip and make sure that the upper corner never touches solid wood. Cut through logs or limbs under tension in two stages to avoid pinching. Now there's one last thing you can do to protect yourself. One last line of defense. Right, your PPE, your personal protective equipment. Chainsaw boots, chainsaw pants, gloves, and hard hat. Plus, of course, your glasses, face shield, and hearing protection. We've discussed kickback, what causes it, and how to prevent it. So now it's up to you to use what you know to protect yourself every time, all the time.